Um, I'd like to welcome uh, everyone tonight to tonight's uh, committee meeting. Um, the information uh, that I've requested um, from Dr. Brown is um, in regards to my my main um, objective was to see how many kids are being in, uh, transferred in from charter schools, and then realizing the impact that that has on our our um, our own programs with this continuing roving door. So I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Williams for her to um, perhaps uh, get us started. All righty, thank you so much, Chairwoman Shuda. Um, I want to welcome everyone, and especially um, our Chief of Student Support Services, uh, Dr. Brown, and our Director over Student Placement and Registration, uh, Ms. Daniels. You know, I am really familiar with a lot of the work that happens within student placement and registration, or at least I was a few years ago. It's probably much more complex than when I remember. But um, I think that this is a very important uh, presentation, and I know that they put a lot of work into it. I do just want to say for the record that, um, you know, student placement is a busy, busy, busy place. I think we all have been over there at some point in time, and we all know and appreciate it's a small team of folks, and they process thousands of children who move into the district, move out of the district, want to transfer from one. It is very complex. So they're going to take a lot of information and try to condense it and make it as comprehensive as possible for everyone. And I know at the conclusion of the presentation, uh, they will entertain questions if there are questions that um, anyone may have. So I will turn things over at this time to Dr. Brown. Thank you. And good evening, Superintendent Williams Knight, honorable board members and listening audience. As we just stated earlier, Honorable uh, Chairperson Shuda requested a brief update on non-criteria high school placements for this school year. And the presentation is inclusive of transfers and data on where the students are coming from. As Dr. Williams just stated, that uh, Kelly Daniels is the director who oversees student placement and registration. And she's here on the platform this evening and prepared to assist and addressing any questions uh, that you may have. Director Daniels, once again, she oversees a huge body of work with a very small dynamic team with the support of Assistant Superintendent Tina Jones. Student placement and registration, again, they have registered thousands of students this school year while simultaneously preparing to register students for the 25-26 school year. Essentially, the student placement team, they work within two school years all at once. And Director Daniels, she took some time out with her team to pull the requested data from July 1st through October 24th for students who were enrolled in a non-criterion school from outside of the district or transfer from one BPS to another school. And we certainly thank the Office of Shared Accountability uh, they definitely assisted with making sure these data uh, are available and pulling some data and program evaluator Dr. Rachel Dominguez for helping to sort it and analyze it. Aligning to Superintendent Williams Knight mission, we welcome all students to the Buffalo Public School District. And I just want to stress that our district has a plethora of resources to meet students where they are to accelerate them. Uh, academically, while also providing social, emotional, physical health support through collaboration. Next slide, please. Student placement and registration, it is a processing center with the heart for the students. And they also must maintain a posture of ob objectivity and adhere to policies and guidelines while ensuring equity when placing students. We are a district of school choice, meaning that parents and children can select any school in the district through the application process, providing that there is a seat available and school criteria is met. Student placement and registration, 
Uh, we also um, ensure that for high school transfers, because they also process that as well, and they have to ensure that first, their seat capacity, there needs to be documentation for medical reasons. There also could be a reason to transfer for safety and welfare if there's documentation and if hardship can be proven. We are also asked to present, we were also asked to present on the number of undercredited students assigned to non-criteria schools. And an uncredited student does not have an adequate number of credits for their age and grade level. Next slide, please. Hmm. This doesn't look very clear. I'm very, very sorry. Not sure why this. Okay, much better. Thank you so much, Amir. Okay, can you just scroll up just a little bit so they can see? Okay. All right, so I'm not sure if you can see this. Okay. So in column A, you will see all of the non-criteria um, criteria schools. And the second column B, it has undercredited. So I'm going to ask you to just scroll down to the last column, 16, where in row 16, yeah, you're fine, um, Amir, thank you. You can pull it back up, where it says 136 out of 680. So that's 136 students who are undercredited. And that number is inclusive of the total number when you look over at column P, where it says 680. So I will explain um, the Excel spreadsheet that's before you. So again, uh, for undercredited, we have 136 students who were either registered from outside the school district or they were transferred from one BPS school to the next, to, the, to another BPS school. We have 133 students from a charter school. 23 students came from private schools. 126 students are from school districts within New York State. 123 students are out of state. 151 students are from out of the country. 12 students we regained and uh, they returned to Buffalo Public Schools. We have six students from a detention center, five students from agency, and one student from a GED program. So you see the red line and anything past the red, the red line denotes transfers and that's from column L through O. So for the student placement office, you see that there were 17 transfers during this period from July 1 to October 31st. And column M shares the name, the schools where those students came from. So again, families go into student placement and registration and they request a transfer to the schools that you see listed. Column N, principal to principal transfer. That is a practice uh, that has been um, existing for many years within the district. And principals are permitted to transfer principal to principal, of course, with parent consent. And you see at the bottom, the total, that is 83 students. And you see in the next column, oh, you see where the students came from. And again, the last column, P, you see the number of students from each school. So again, um, you can just take some time to look at that. I wanted to share with you where the students are coming from and how many actually are being transferred from school to school. So I just want to get a read. Um, that student placement and registration adheres to the school choice process. Again, there is an application 
that the families fill out. They have up to five choices. They don't have to, to make five choices. Um, they're always told that it's important that, you know, you choose the schools that you would like to attend in the event uh, that you are accepted. And they adhere to the school choice process, inclusive of criteria and seat availability. Next slide, please. Finally, uh, Director Daniels and her team, they designed this logo this school year. And it's really a reminder that the work that is conducted uh, within student placement and registration, it focuses on a fair and equitable process to ensure that all students, as you can see, they're students of different ages from elementary, middle school, and finally to ensure that they reach high school and graduate. And we want to, make sure that once they're registered, that they have all the supports that they need within the school to, again, meet students where they are, to accelerate them not only academically, but socially, emotionally, and also for their physical well-being. So this concludes our update. I promise that it will be a brief update. And now we're open for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate you getting this information. I think this is the first time I've ever seen it laid out in this fashion. And I, I really appreciate the work. I have one question. Um, do we have, you know, undercredited is one thing. Do we keep track of how many kids are under um, exam? Because undercredited is one thing but you may have all your credits and have zero exams going into your senior year. So that's some information down the line, even though we are trending away from um, um, the exams uh, at the state level. But I think that that has an impact when a school is getting a high level of upperclassmen that are uh, being transferred in. And um, Mr. Hurd, do you have a question or a remark? Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. Okay, one question is: um, Are we not? Are we just not considering um, 131, one of our um, criteria schools? Oh, first of all, great, great presentation, and uh, I agree with um, the chairwoman about um, receiving this data, this information. So, my, my first question about 131: Are we, are we not considering that a criterion school? So, 131. It. it 131 includes a criteria of its own. We do not place students from outside of the district immediately into that school. I'm going to ask Director Daniels if she has any information to add regarding that. So 131, it, um, it does have a criteria. So when students are coming to the district, we do look at um, academics and we do look at their behavior. If students are have multiple behavior infractions and they are multiple behavior infractions where we feel that we would recommend that student to 131 that application is sent to um, the um, associate Ms. Watson she um, reviews it and then she gives us the okay whether those students um, should attend or not um, this year it's we've only sent um, about five students so there has not been a lot of um, students entering 131 for this school year okay and just two more quick questions uh well actually it's kind of a statement um we, we are losing students and and two of the reasons why i just want to say this quickly uh it's a little bit off topic but um but um one is due to long-term suspensions here and with the within the district that um uh, parents that feel that the children are home too long and they're moving over to charter schools, which which really we need to help inflate our numbers that we have here. And the second thing is um, a number of parents that can plan that their children go to separate schools and they should go to the same school at the same household. And I know that some are some are uh, placed due to testing and some are not by criteria basis. And uh, just some things that hopefully that we can help approve one in the near future. But so thank I must say, um, I'm sorry. Um, so keeping families together is our one the number one goal here at student placement and registration so we do process transfers um 
and um, applications every day for to get families together. Again, our district is so complex that you're correct. There are criteria schools that students do have to qualify for. If they receive um, special education services, that could separate students. So there's always a reason why families are separated. But again, we do whatever we can do to ensure that families are together. I know this is Daniels. We've talked many times in the past about this and, and parents that you have helped and families that you have helped. So I really appreciate that. Um, but we still get calls coming in about it. And I know it's, it's, it's not the district issue or, you know, I mean, we try to meet all the demands for our children and place them where they need it at. But that's just still some of the things that I hate that it's a caveat that we actually still got parents to plan our full children out of public education because of it. So, uh, so the thank comments, you uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Hurd. The thing that um, I guess that's one of the concerning things is the influx of kids from charter schools. And I think that what happens is uh, we absorb the accountability. And I know that, that this is a tough subject for us to, to address, but we have kids that are removed because of academics and behaviors. And I'm just wondering if schools that are getting these children that need extra support, if we are giving extra support that follow these students uh, that are coming in. But that's a discussion perhaps for another evening. And I um, I just, uh, um, Ms. Daniels, I wanna thank you. I know it's hard work. No one is minimizing the work of student placement, but I just think that um, we need to recognize that students are coming back to us and uh, what our situation is that there's students sometimes that have been removed from schools and we don't, we accept all students. So that's just something I think that we have to be aware of. And it does impact some of the schools that have the higher rates of students uh, transferring in from places. And it, it's hard on a school, it's hard on a faculty, and it's hard on students to never have, um, other schools have a very stable cohort where they get to go with the same kids all through high school. And then we have other schools that it's kind of like a revolving door and they're not really sure who's gonna show up the next day. And I think that all uh, kids deserve uh, the best that we can give them. So thank you. And so now at this point, I think we're going to now turn over uh, to Dr. Kathy Evans-Brown. Are we ready for our next part? Sure. Can I just say one thing on this before we sure. close out? Because I did hear board member Hurd share, you know, about us losing students. And, you know, I just want to say that, you know, I had a preliminary meeting with um, some of our folks in um, budget who watched enrollment really closely to see where we're trending and when we're, where we're losing. This is the first year that we gained students we're not at a deficit there. And I think, you know, that speaks a lot to the work because the narrative is that we're losing kids. We're losing kids because of this. we're losing kids. Not so much anymore. And, you know, I've said since I've sat in this seat, game on, I believe in choice, no question about it. Um, you know, but certainly, you know, we try to do everything that we can to amplify and make our district just as competitive just as great as, you know, private, Catholic, and charter school districts. And I think it is beginning to take hold and our parents are now beginning to choose Buffalo Public Schools and not just flee from our schools. So this is the first year that we haven't seen this mass exodus, even though I know that's the narrative that's out there. That is not what our data is showing us. Our data is showing us that we gained students this year instead of taking a hit and losing students. I just wanted to clear that up. That's as of our best data date data. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Brown and Ms. Daniels for uh, your presentation. And again, I concur with what has been said, um, particularly with uh, Ms. Shuda, 
that um, the information was simple, simple to read. Um, the data shows that we have gained students. Buffalo Public Schools and any public school are open for kids. We cannot deny any, any child admittance to our schools. Um, I think the difference between public schools and charter schools are that charters tend to handpick kids. We don't. And so with that, it, the data show that we gained 151 students and 138 somewhere else. So the narrative need to change and the data speaks for itself. So thank you for your presentation. So I'm going to move on. Uh, Leslie Grant from the Council of Grace City Schools may join us, but because she has a work commitment, I'm going to um, just <clears throat> follow up on what we did or have been doing um, with the Council of Grace City Schools in terms of our um, student outcome focused governance. Um, last week, Dr. William Knight was not with us because she was in DC um, for the uh, wonderful presentation of uh, City Honors being recognized as a blue ribbon school. Um, but Dr. Karest is um, sat in, in her, her absence. Um, Leslie, our coach, and Cindy McKetchen, uh, a board member, went over the 25, 30 goals with the interims. Um, it was very wow. intensive. Um, and so today, I just want to reiterate um, where we are in our next step. So last week, um, they co-presented updates on the interims received by the board um, in a timely fashion by the superintendent and her team. And also we went over um, a self-evaluation, a board self-evaluation, because it's, it's, it's noted that if we're um, evaluating the superintendent, we need to evaluate ourselves as board. Um, so the presentation was wonderful. We have some work to do in terms of, you know, our own self-evaluation. So the next steps um, at the next board meeting, excuse my dog, um, we're going to be looking at drafting our goals and guardrails for, um, in terms of a video so that it could be public or some kind of uh, video uh, or survey feedback form. Um, we want to do another session to provide the public with feedback from um, our listening uh, sessions with them so that they know that we did listen and we, we have um, set some goals um, for uh, the district. The other thing is so there's two things, the 25, 30 goals. And then, as you know, we adopted the 24, 25 goals um, with the superintendent. And let me reemphasize what those are. Goal one is literacy. This is 24, 25. The percent of economically disadvantaged grade three students who are proficient on the New York State grade three ELA assessment will increase from 14.1% in September 2024 to 19.3% in September 2025. Goal two, numeracy. The percent of economically disadvantaged grade six students who are proficient on the New York State grade six math assessment will increase from 23.5% in September 2024 to 26% in September 2025. Goal three, high school. The percentage, the percent of cohort of the 2024 students who pass at least one regents exam by the end of their first year of high school will increase from 38.5% in August 2024 to 39.5% in August of 2025. And lastly, goal four, high school. The percent of 
cohort 2024 students who earn 5.5 credits by the end of their first year of high school will increase from 59.9% in June 2024 to 64% in June 2025. So we adopted these goals for 2024 as a board, um, along with the interims that were produced as well. Um, one of the loose ends on that is that um, we don't have guardrails. So the recommendation by our the Council of Grace City Schools, our um, coach, was to focus on the guardrails that the board adopted. And I'm going to remind us of what those are. We all voted on it some time back. Um, this is the Board of Education resolution guardrails for the board. As the Board of Education has committed to becoming a board focused on improving student outcomes, we recognize that our adult behaviors must change to uphold this commitment. As we have given the superintendent specific guardrails that protect the values of our community, we understand the need to establish guardrails for our behavior as a board. The board shall operate within the board's role as defined on board policy number 1110-1310 and the board's current operating procedures, specifically as defined in board policy 1311 and 6110. The board either collectively or through the actions of individual board members, number one, this is guard rule one, shall not invest more than, less than 50% of its minutes each month into monitoring student outcome goals. We haven't gotten there yet, but we are on our way. Guard rule two, shall not perform or appear to perform any of the responsibilities delegated to the superintendent. Guard rule three, shall not violate any board adopted policy or district procedure. And guard rule four, shall not behave in a manner that would violate the student code of conduct. So these were our board guard rules, and we're going to focus in on those for the 24-25 proposed goals for um, the district. So in addition, um, the implementation committee, myself, Cindy McCutcheon and board member Shuda talked about these things and um, Cindy sent out the minutes of that last meeting um, to include, we want to um, provide the community in four quadrants, north, south, east and west with um, information on the results of, of, of the goals for um, this district. And so beginning 12-7 and I believe 12-14, um, we're going to look at specific school sites um, to do that at. So for example, in the East District, we're looking at Harvey Austin on the Saturday and Saturday Academies. Um, uh, board member Shooter has has um, provided um, some, I believe, dates and sites for Saturday Academy. So we're looking at that. In addition, we're looking at doing a video that will um, encompass what we're doing so that the community can see where we are in terms of, you know, like a script, a video, and having them complete a survey. We're also looking at a January board retreat. So it's suggested to frame the 25, the frame the 2025 and provide a reset for the current board and training for any new board members. Um, so Cindy's working with um, Dr. Crestus, I believe, on that. Um, any questions so far? I don't want to just be talking. Oh, yes, I have a question. Okay, go ahead, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, you said that we adopted these goals um, upon um, 
with the implementation committee or we adopted these goals um you said it was voted upon adopted as uh, voted upon by the entire board for the now board. which, which goals you're talking about 24 25 or the board guardrails uh, the board guardrails the board guardrails were adopted uh early this year i believe and we all adopted them it was unanimous we all we all adopted uh but we didn't simply go over each measure on the gold guardrails. Rail, we just had some measures that we that we supposed to go by uh, one, two, and three, and four. Correct. But, we have. Mm -hmm. So it's been added things been added on to the guardrails. I, I'm, I'm, no. just, I'm just I'm just um this has been known that the last time we voted for the Council of Great City Schools, I voted against it, and uh, it's just some unproven things. And I just you know looking at the policies, how we putting the stress on the district and how we kind of move our guardrails forward. Um, and we're the only district in New York State that's practicing and using the Council of Great City Schools. I just think that we we really um, went into a, a scope that, that that's really um, uh, changing the fabric of, of education here in, in, in Buffalo. But these are highly unproven methods. And, um, and other districts across the country had went through this and pulled out from the Council of Great City Schools. And I really think as a board, we need to revisit these goals and guardrails and our policies of how we moving forward. Some of the things are are, are good to um, follow through with, but um, a lot of these things, as I've been researching and looking through the Council of Great City Schools, um, uh, really led by um, unqualified um, people that's 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 conducting our district right now, and um, I just don't want us to to take a bad turn into this with these unproven methods and 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 uncanny type practices that it's asking our district to do and for our leadership to follow. Well, thank you for your comment. The guardrails for the board were adopted prior to, to your decision not to um, support um, the ongoing um, process of them. Uh, secondly, Rochester School District is now um, adopting these student focused governance as is that's in new york state but there's uh, so, so the city of rochester voted on country. using the council of great city schools i'm uh, sorry so the city of rochester voted upon using the count the council of great city schools as Correct. Their, um, yep their student yeah. governance mm -hmm. outcome focused government um, student outcomes don't change until adult behaviors change. That's the mantra. Um, that's, that's, that's the mantra, that's but the mantra. Adult, adult behaviors hasn't changed on this board and we're still moving forward with um, with, with, with this platform and, and nothing has been done to address adult behaviors on this board. Well, we've, been here, we've been here three years now. I think we're, we're moving forward. Dr. Williams, Dr. Williams I, I and I did that. her state of the state address, and there was movement in this district. Student outcomes are changing because adults are changing. And, um, you know, I, I, I we could talk about this afterwards, but. No, I think we should talk about it. I, I don't think agree. adult behaviors have changed. And I, I think that we had a caveat right now to where uh, it's, we really had as a board and direction is it's really a uh, all time low. And, um, and, Adult behaviors have gotten worse on this board, and that, that's why I'm addressing it and trying to uh, come to the board and the community about this in this fashion because uh, these unproven methods and and these things that happen, we have I have record. I, I don't want to name names right now, but it's districts all over the country that started with the council of these schools and moved forward away from them because of the type of destructive path that they have in their districts. Well, I'm, I disagree, parents. We have just you know, Rakowski, uh, myself. Uh, Cindy McCutcheon, um, along with Paulette Woods, we just completed a cohort of um, the Council of Great City Schools uh, student governance. Um, it was a, not, um, a year long uh, training. It was very viable in terms of monitoring, in terms of, of um, uh, help me out, guys. Uh, but it was very successful. And I tell you, uh, cities like Ohio, um, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and so on, um, garnered this 
embraced it. We had principals, former principals who are on board, just like Shuda. Um, we had uh, administrators, we had all types of school board members who really embraced this effort and are excited that student outcomes are, is the focus of school districts across this country. Well, my ex would be that this board take a look at um, some of the some of the writings by other school districts that that were working with the Council of Great City Schools and see what their reaction was afterwards after they left the Council of Great City Schools. Um, I like to say I don't want to name them all right now, but I really think yes, that as a board, we, as sure a board we, 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 we should look at our pros and cons as as this district move forward because these are our children that we're talking about. And that um and with this, I think that we should really as a board be judiciously and, and responsible um in our spending with the Council of Great City Schools and the amount of money that's been spent with them and also um look at what the educational values you know that's being implemented i'm so happy you know we, we set such high standards that that set design that so we can't achieve them and that's un unachievable but i'm happy that this district were able to achieve these goals this past this past year because of the work of the superintendent and this administrative staff and, and the great work they put forward to make sure that our children is in success and i think that's where our strength lies at through our administrative staff and our and our um superintendent and I think that that's what we should be leaning on at this time and not leaning on words by people who don't understand or know our district. Well, thing is, we were saying they, they don't know our district. They don't know us. They don't know our, our community. That's understandable. So understandable. We can talk you know, more about regions. this, but right now, um, is this not is the, the time to talk. Time. This is the time to well, talk about it. Okay, so let me move on. Anybody else have anything to say? All right. So let's go back to the 2425 board, I mean, um, goals and the superintendent's evaluation. I asked last um, board meeting or committee meeting for two people to join myself to look at um, what should be modified on the evaluation metrics that coincide with the 2425 goals. Uh, Dr. Williams Knight and I have talked about this and we will continue to talk about it. So tentatively, I want to, um, you know, set some expectations and timelines um, for the modifications and distribute those modifications because the whole board needs to be involved in that process as well. I definitely want to be part of part of removing some of the things that that are old, doesn't, doesn't aren't relevant and recognizing, putting things in it that actually recognize some of the achievements that make the district gate uh, great. If we're gonna get excellent uh, kudos from our, our stability board saying we did an excellent job, then our evaluation should reflect reality. So I wanna work on that committee. Okay, thank you board member Woods. Look at you down. And there's space for one more. Terry. Terry Shooter. Are you interested? Sure. All right. Terry Shooter. So that would be the ad hoc, ad hoc committee. Of three to determine the modifications, we'll distribute the written modifications and then bring the whole board in um, with the edits. And hopefully, at our 12 11 work session, um, we can um, solidify and adopt um, the modifications um, and include, of course, our uh, superintendent, Tanya Williams Knight. So with that, that's all I have. Um, any feedback, observations um, after that dialogue? Um, I, I strongly urge that we as a board revisit this at the next board board session and, and look at uh, the, the information that's, that uh, I attain um, through uh, people and um, other other writings about districts that moved away from the Council of Great City Schools, who supports them, um, what lobbyist group groups support this organization, and what they're trying to drive our our district into, 
and who they support. So it, it doesn't really uh, meet our educational standards as, as we look into the as we look into the platform of what they stand for. And I just think that um, we should really take dive into that without expressing or giving information on today, uh, more information today, but as a board, we should really take a look into it. Well, this is the first time, Terrence, that you're bringing this, you know, to our attention. Um, so if you have some substantiated documentation, please share. Okay. Um, yeah, please share. And okay. we'll take a look at it. I appreciate it. Um, any anything else? Okay, with that, you're going to be happy and excited that I am done. I've concluded my committee meeting and thank you, um, President. Chairman Shooter for uh, spreading your time over to the uh, executive committee. Dr. Williams Knight, do you want to wrap this up? Sure, sure. Um, I don't really have anything um, to add to that discussion, um, but whenever you're ready for me to start with the next um, presentation, I can start. And um, I'm going to try to keep you know, keep going with us ending briefly and early. So you let me know whenever you're ready. Uh, Madam Superintendent and uh, Chairperson Shuda, I know everyone's happy about the early time, but unfortunately I'm gonna make everyone unhappy because we will need to wait till six o'clock. Uh, Vice President uh, Scott will be acting as chair for finance and ops chair. McKechn and he needed a little time uh, tonight. He has some required parent teacher conferences in the school district that he works in. Um, and as a courtesy, I would ask that we give him until uh, six o'clock. So we're prepared to take a break and pause. I know everyone's disappointed, but we, we definitely want to start uh, at six o'clock when that committee is slated to start. Okay, and it's 540 as we speak. All right. If I see Mr. Scott appear logged in, I will uh, make an announcement to gather everyone back up. Um, but so sorry for that, but we're gonna take a pause now and then I'll uh, make an announcement if I see Mr. Scott logging on. No problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Vice President Scott. I see you logged in. Are you prepared to uh, open the committee? Um, yes, are we ready to go for? Uh, okay, for yeah, let me just uh, ask everyone to log back on and then we should be all set. I really appreciate you were able to log on a few minutes early because we finished early. So board right, members, if you can, yeah, board members, if you could go ahead and unmute yourselves or you don't have to unmute yourself, but just be ready for finance and operations to continue. And Vice President Scott will be acting as chair um, for chairperson Cindy McKechn. All right, Mr. Scott, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, we are going to get an update on the food commissary. And I just wanna first say, uh, thank Superintendent Dr. Williams Knight, Chief Barnes, Chief Hills, 
um, for all of their transparency, their responsiveness um, to the board, to the public on this important project. Um, I know that after we received an update a few weeks ago that you had a public meeting and I know that you have another one scheduled tomorrow evening. So just wanna just send out appreciation for all the diligence um, from you, superintendent, and all the staff involved um, with this project. So with that said, I'll turn it over to Dr. Williams-Knight um, to kick things off. Thank you, Vice President Scott. Um, I, before I get into, um, and it's really a discussion, so it's not a presentation, it's just a discussion and update. Um, I do want to just, you know, share with this board, I would be remiss if I didn't share that, you know, we lost a student um, this week and, um, you know, it was over a weekend and I had the opportunity to speak with the students. Mom, I will be sending information via text um, to the board on services, but um, mom was certainly very appreciative that the district reached out um, to her. As you can imagine, she is um, distraught. She is distraught. And so I ask that we just keep that family um, in our thoughts um, as we move forward. And we had a uh, cabinet member that, you know, went to surgery today. So let's just keep that also in our thoughts um, as we move forward. It goes back to just talking about grace. And, you know, I spoke to assistant principal, I mean, to elementary principals today and, you know, just talk to them about the importance of grace and taking care of themselves because you can't pour into others until you know you are well and whole so with all of that being said um, tonight we're going to be discussing very briefly updates on where we are with building our beautiful bps state of the art commissary it will be coming um, i want to share for some you know where we've come from i spoke today to David Hills, and he shared with me how this has really been a nine year journey. You know, we've been on this journey for quite a while. And then I'll talk about where we are right now in the process and where it is that, you know, we will be going in the near future. So this process really began in 2015, 2015, 16, when a study was done by, Al by Foyt Albert, and the study was really to see if it would be more advantageous for this district to bring our current commissary up to speed or if it would be better for us to look at building a new one. And it was determined that um, it would be more advantageous on many fronts to build a new commissary. And so we were ready to roll and then COVID hit. COVID hit, they did a study and COVID hit and everything came to a halt. But then in 2022, as we were coming out of the pandemic, um, we had received four bids for uh, the building of a new commissary and our McGuire construction company was selected by an evaluation team to be the developer that would in fact be building the commissary. And so that fall, the board passed a resolution that would allow us to begin negotiating a lease to purchase with the McGuire Developing Company. And so we began planning right away. And there was a diverse team that was put together of about 20 or so people, both from BPS and from the community. And some of the folks that were included in this team were value engineers, community stakeholders, block club members, um, common council members, food service experts, and some BPS staff. And they began meeting with the McGuire developer team every two weeks and sometimes even weekly to begin this exciting work of building a new commissary. What would it look like? Who would it benefit? All of those things. Um, at that time, the district had $38 million set aside in a C fund. And that is money that was saved, as you all already know, during our COVID years. There was also an additional $5 million in a grant 
that was set aside for food service equipment to also um, support the commissary. Well, that May of 2023, we learned from the New York State Education Department that a lease to purchase was not an option for not only us as a school district, but any school district in New York State. And in sharing that, I just asked the board to keep in mind that this project is huge, it's complex, and it's unprecedented, and that there's no other district that we can look to for a playbook. And so in earnest, all of the staff and myself, we were exploring every option that was on the table to try to get this done in a timely process and in a way that would be least costly to the district. We were really leaving no stone unturned. So that was uh, May of 2023 that we found that out. That following October, we then received authorization from the board to begin to pursue working with the city to look at purchasing the land and the property. This is the way that, you know, um, some of our schools are currently owned. The city owns them and we have sovereignty over the property. The city would be on the deed, but we would have sovereignty um, over the school and what happened on a day-to-day -day basis in the school. That was in October. That March, we turned over documents to the city and that March, uh, we learned that the city could not move forward with that because there were some issues in the language of the procurement process. So at that point, that's when we learned that the city purchasing the land and the property was no longer up for consideration. So at that point, last March, our options were to either come back to the board and look at starting a whole brand new RFP process all over again. Remember, we're already in year nine of this. So it would have taken at least a year or longer if we had selected that option or to look at a straight lease, which is what the state recommended that we do. So this past September, we were directed in a board approved resolution to begin renegotiating with the McGuire developer company to do three things, to pursue a lease agreement, to pursue possible reimbursement, we would be working with NYSED, and at the same time, to begin expanding regular communication with all of the community on this project. So in a time where, you know, everyone knows we're experiencing fiscal challenges like districts all across the United States, these were all really good recommendations. So what did we do? We immediately convened a BPS team that included our chief financial officer, our chief operating officer, public relations, legal, human resources, parent engagement, and governmental affairs. And we began meeting and strategizing immediately to see what our next steps needed to be. So now that we knew we had to lease, the big question really was, could this project receive building aid? And would McGuire still be willing to work with the district on this project? We had a meeting with Mr. McGuire and his team. He flew in for this meeting. This was important enough for him to fly into Buffalo, New York, come to 712 City Hall with his team. And he sat with our team and I'm happy to say that they were committed to completing this project. So next, all we had to do was try to get all of the NYSED departments in one room because there was a differing of opinions on if building aid could be in fact something that could be used for the commissary. Some were saying maybe so, some were saying probably not, and some just didn't know. So I convened a virtual meeting in September with many of the folks from our team that I've mentioned. And we asked for NYSED's team to also be on the platform. And they had someone from their facilities department, from their food service department, from their legal team, and our big five representative was also there. It was important for all of us to get into one room, talk honestly, and hear the same things and come to a decision on what we could do and what we could not do. 
and I just have to keep saying it, but the project is such a nuance, you know, that the state was very honest with us when we met and sharing that they were not prepared to give us an answer right away because it's something new for them to consider also. And so what they requested during that meeting was that this district send them a list of documents to help them to make a determination on if in fact building A could be provided on our lease commissary. So immediately we've got a great team, as you heard Vice President Scott share, they got busy immediately and began working to get all of the documents that were requested, which included a draft lease, lease terms, including proposed lease payments, the use of the nutrition funds if building aid became available and if it was not, what basic floor plans for confirmation of space usage would look like, the intent of all other kitchens within the district, confirmation that all food cooking is currently handled through the least centralized commissary building that we have, a construction schedule for the commissary building, and the plan for 2025's food service, considering that the commissary building will not be ready and that the current lease is just about up. So I share that list with you to let you you know, hear just how much they were requesting from all of our staff. And I want to say kudos to this team because, you know, it, this all happened at the start of the school year. And there's no busier time, as this board knows, than the start of a school year and the end of a school year. And so they put aside their priorities and got to work to gather all of this information that was requested in a timely fashion. And they did it. And here's where we are right now. We have complied with all of the requests that the state education has asked of us. Um, to date, we've been advised by them that they had a meeting internally and that they are now reviewing all of the information that we have submitted to them and they're sharing it with their legal department. What they have advised us is that at this point, there's really no need to continue meeting until they receive a decision from their legal department. So they have everything we've submitted, they're taking a look at it and considering it very seriously. With respect to keeping the public engaged, which is something that this board required of the district, as you heard Vice President Scott share, we immediately, almost immediately, um, convened a meeting at the commissary. It was very well attended. It was not, I believe board member Shooter was there. It was not a one-way dialogue where we just got there and presented to them. It was uh, very much a two-way dialogue. They had feedback. They had, you know, very good questions of the folks that were there. We have another meeting scheduled for tomorrow night at the Delavan Greider Community Center. Um, we've tried to hit different segments of the city, so I believe we have one in North Buffalo and another one on the west side that's coming up. Uh, Chief Hills has that information. Um, we've already met with our parent leads. That's something that will continue. Um, I've had a subsequent meeting with one of our parent leads, um, Mrs. Barr, who was particularly interested in food security. And is it possible for us to use some of our local gardens to support the fresh vegetables that the commissary will use. Um, we've met and will continue to meet. And I share that again to share that, you know, no ask is too big. Uh, we, we at this point are hearing what the concerns are and the wants from all. Um, there have been regular meetings held with the McGuire group. I believe there's another one that's scheduled for next week. So we're really trying very hard to keep this community engaged on where we are in a very transparent and honest way with the commissary. So here's where we're going. The resolution that was passed by the board outlines that the developer will submit bi-monthly construction reports to a commissary construction advisory committee that will be providing them information about developer compliance. My ask at this point is that this board consider having each board member appoint an individual to make up this committee. This will help ensure 
equity, inclusion, and diversity on the committee. Not a decision that has to be made tonight, but um, Dr. Carestis will be reaching out to board members to see, you know, how you feel about, you know, having this kind of um, committee representative of stakeholders from each board member. I want the board to know that our current commissary lease will be expiring this coming August, but that we are able to invoke an up to five year extension with the current commissary. And it's really important that the board consider this. And here's why we currently service 88 locations that's in Buffalo public schools, charters, agencies, and most Catholic schools for breakfast, for lunch, and even for extended learning time um, activities, we're providing snacks. That's a lot. And we don't wanna see a break in service as we're moving forward and constructing our new state of the art commissary building. So that's something that we'll be coming to the board with um, asking you to consider us expanding or extending that current commissary lease that we have. Now, if we don't hear from our New York State Education Department partners within a couple of weeks, I know that the holidays are coming up, but I will be reaching out to our big five advocates to give a gentle nudge to the state as time really is of the essence. So that's really the presentation, but I, I just wanna give a huge shout out of appreciation to all who have been diligently working on this, including the board. You know, this really has been a very inclusive, the board has been um, very in touch with this commissary. And um, I want to thank this board. I want to thank Ms. Roof I mean, she, I don't even know how they get food out to 88 every day, three times a day uh, buildings, but that is just huge. Our PR team worked on getting the word out. Our first meeting was very well attended. I'm hopeful that tomorrow night will be just as well attended. And to the executive leadership team for all that they've been doing behind the scenes. Again, it was a busy time of year and they put everything on hold and made this um, you know, a priority. We've presented to the Common Council. Um, they're working with city officials, the community, um, you know, legal parents, everybody to try to get this over the finish line. This is really, again, a huge, 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 complex, never done before project. And so, you know, I'm proud to say that we are getting it done, maybe not as quickly as some would like, but it's because we have really tried to leave no stone unturned and we have tried to pursue every avenue that we could. So I want to just end by saying that, you know, I know that a lot of our work, I heard Dr. Evans Brown say that, you know, it needs to really be focused on the goals. And certainly this is because, um, you know, if our children are not eating well and are not healthy and well and eating nutritious foods, then they will not be as positioned to learn, grow and achieve as we need for them to be. So I'll end with that. I do have a couple of folks on if you have very detailed, specific questions. I have Chief Hills on that will be able to address any, but if you have questions for me, um, feel free to ask. Thank you, Superintendent. Dr. Williams Knight, excellent update. Um, and I just want to second uh, your recognition of Director Ruth Connor of the Food Service and all of her work that she does. I think you said 80 something different sites that we provide food to. That is certainly a heavy, heavy task. Um, all right, we're going to go opposite or reverse alphabetical order. So Board Member Woods, any questions? No, I commend the superintendent and her staff for keeping this project moving and for keeping so many pieces in the air. All of the things we've asked for community involvement is important. You've done it. Investigating, maximizing resources is difficult. Your committee has done it. And uh, getting a lease and keeping feeding our kids is important. So I just commend you for all the hard work you always do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Woods. Uh, Board Member Shuda. 
And I, I too uh, would like to uh, congratulate everyone on the progress. Uh, I look forward to uh, the proposal of, of, this, of each of us appointing someone from, so we have a pretty uh, uh, varied uh, representation of the city. So thank you. And I look forward to making my recommendation. Thank you. Board Member McCosey, any questions? I, I don't have questions. I think that um, it's very obvious that the work is really being done. Um, I know that this has been quite the journey and we've had some, you know, some bumps and bruises along the way, but we're getting it done. I love the update, you know, and the fact that we're keeping with the community engaged. Um, I feel that that's obviously key because when people felt that they were out of the loop, you know, the thunder came. So I'm glad that we're answering to to all questions and you're opening up these spaces for this. Other than that, yeah, we definitely can't not have a building while we're constructing a building. So, I, I mean, I see no reason for us not to have the extension. So you'll have my support on that. And uh, again, I don't have questions. I think you, you know, you pretty much cover everything. I just wanted to thank everybody as well, uh, especially David, and Mr. Hills. You're like, you're the man. Let's get this done. Talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Board Member McCosey. Board Member Hurd, any questions? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I would like to say, uh, first of all, thank you to uh, the Superintendent and, and um, David Hills for this diligently working on this project. We know that there's a lot of great concerns about this commissary and the assurance that we continue to make sure that this actually becomes reality is everything to our children, to this community. Um, Mr. Hills, you know, um, you've been working diligently on this, but one thing I did ask for, and I would love to see if it's possibly could be put in the plans is to have a community kitchen there at that site also where our kids, our graduates can go work and get job experience and also help the community because that is a food desert area. I will continue saying that, I'll keep on saying that. And um, hopefully that we can get some drawings or something like that in, inside our schematics so that that could be part of the project. Uh, all our cases are hot foods, hot lunches. And, um, and thank you for the endless work you did with the city of Buffalo to make this reality to, to um, push forward for the land and, and the um, partnership with that um, as far as the lease and um, thank you for the community focus pieces of it also that we actually going out to the community, meet with community members and everybody's concerns are being heard with this. So this district is doing a wonderful and fine job. Great leadership. Thank you, board member Hurd. And I know that wasn't a question, um, but I just wanted to quickly. Are you having trouble hearing me? Yeah, okay. Um, the um, just want the community kitchen is on the drawings, always going to be called a test kitchen, um, simply because we're trying to position the drawings to be labeled for the highest level of aid ability. Um, but the programming of that community kitchen is something that we are really interested in hearing from our stakeholders. And it's one of the things that's going to be the focus of the meeting tomorrow night is hearing what are some of the, the great ideas we have for synergy to use that community kitchen, um, that test kitchen area? And just um, the next meeting is, there's a meeting in January, January 9th at International Prep and a meeting March 26th back at the East Sullivan location. So Thank I will you. continue to promote those meetings. I, I believe those meetings will have wonderful outcomes. Like that's a huge food desert area and people will love to have a, a great place to go to and see the, the works of our children and, and our staff members, you know, going in for breakfast or lunch or anything like that. So thank you for uh, really, really listening. All right. And Vice President, Dr. Evans Brown. Yes, my sentiments are along with the lines of my colleagues. Um, good job. I'm looking for, I think it's a brilliant idea um, whoever came up with it to have each board member um, uh, recommend someone, you know, from the community, um, because we have enough on our plates as well. 
So it would be nice to have another ear, you know, involved. So thank you for that. I look forward to the end of the road. Thank you. Very good. I don't see any other board members on. So I think that concludes all questions. Um, Superintendent Dr. Williams Knight, staff, any closing comments? No, well, just, you know, thanking the board. I mean, we've been lockstep every step of the way with this. And you're right, it's been a journey. It's been a long journey. Um, but at least I can start to see some, some gold at the end of this. So I, I can see um, that, you know, we are making strides towards meeting the goal. So it's exciting. It's, it's been a little frustrating, but it's exciting. I, it, and it's good to know that, you know, we're all in this together, the community included. Um, I was very impressed when I went to uh, the first meeting with, you know, was a diverse group of stakeholders, the block clubs were there. And um, again, they really want to be involved in this process. Yeah. Excellent, excellent news. Great work from everyone and something that BPS should certainly be proud of. Um, looks like board member Shuda has one more comment or question. Or do we have another uh, segment to this or are we done? Or is this that for tonight? This okay. is all well, I have. We're, I'm we're, going, we're finished. I'm going yeah. to, I'm going to uh, wish uh, McKinley High School and the Sparks, uh, good luck this week, uh, Friday night. Um, go Sparks and go Max. And I look forward uh, to being uh, at the uh, Friday night game. So thank you. Absolutely. Excellent way to close. Go Sparks and go Max. Yes. All right, everyone. We are done early. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> Yay. That's because you're right. really hard. Thank you. Good Thank night. You so Thank you. Bye. Good night, everyone. Uh, good, good night, night everyone. Good night. Be blessed, everyone. Adios.